So may I know whether my screen is visible to everyone? Yeah. Yes, sir, it is. Yes, okay. So thank you, everyone. So good morning. So today in this session, we'll discuss some more about this filter and attributes. About attributes, we have already discussed some concept about uh, uh, Pi network and uh, T type network. Uh, today uh, session is all about classification of filters. So what are what are filters all about, and uh, how they are categorized. And what are the, um, the details regarding? Okay, <clears throat> but before that, uh, just I want to tell you the uh, the, the main terminology which we used in uh, uh, in uh, in filter or in attenuator. That's the uh, the terminology is called decibel or Napier. Okay, so basically uh, how we can uh, define it as so uh, especially in case of uh, attenuator when the attenuation of wave or filter can be expressed. So that is actually expressed in terms of decibel or Napier nep, nep, Okay, so that is actually the case uh, when we use this term uh, decibel or Napier. So basically this Napier is a natural logarithmic of ratio of input voltage or current to the output voltage or current, provided that network is properly terminated in characteristic input as Z0. So this is actually the term, if you can remember in uh, when we solve the uh, numerical problems, this n term we use. Okay, so that is nothing but our uh, Napier uh, we used. n is for Napier. That is nothing but logarithmic scale v1 by v2. What is v1? v1 is the input voltage which is applied to the input two port network, and v2 is the output voltage given to this two port network. Similarly, i1 is the input current, and i2 is the output current. So in terms of power, if we can uh, define it, so this power can be logarithmic to the base E, P1 by P2, that is our N. Okay, so that is all about our uh, decibel and Napier that generally we use uh, in uh, attenuator, most, most, mostly we are used. So how we can use decibel? Decibel will be is the logarithmic ratio of input power to the output power. So that is nothing but our decibel d 10 log to the base 10 p1 by p2. What is p1? p1 is the input voltage, input power sorry, and p2 is the output power. And if you can express in terms of its uh, voltage or current, as you know p power is, is equal to v square by r. So that term when we take into consideration, so in terms of decibel, it is 20 log to the base 10 V1 by V2 or 20 log to the base 10 I1 by I2. So this is uh, the this is the, uh, the expression or you can say the equation for decibel, how we can write in terms of V1 and V2 or P1 by P2. Similarly, also when you expressed in terms of Napier, so that is log to the base E V1 by V2 and log to the base E I1 by I2. Okay. So this is all about the decibel and Napier. So one decibel, remember this one, one decibel is equal to 0 0.115 Napier. So this is the uh, this is the relation between uh, decibel and Napier. Okay. So I hope all of you can understand what is decibel and Napier. Now, the most important thing is that a different kind of filters we generally take into consideration. Okay, so if you can see, there are uh, different kind of filters. If you can see here, so how they are categorized. So there are basically four types of uh, filters we generally use. So please note it; it is very very important as for our circuit theory is concerned. And as far as this mod, uh, this module is concerned, so what are different kind of filters we use? So filter is something means you can say to filter undesired signal as per our required application. Normal, uh, if you can see a, a application will we use, let's say one singer uh, when he uh, he or she records his voice in a in a closed platform, so many filters are used. In order to have to uh, to attenuate or you can say 
to remove the undesired signal okay and uh, only allow the desired signal which is required for our application so that is actually filter so filter that is the uh, you can say is a device or you can say it is a circuit where we can able to allow certain signals and remove the signal which is not desirable for our own purpose so that is actually our filter so depending upon the range of frequency which we have so this uh, 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 this uh, filter can be categorized into four types so one is our low pass filter which is called low pass filter another is a uh, high pass filter another is uh, this band pass filter and uh, last one is band elimination filter uh, it's also called a uh, band stop filter also okay so this uh, uh, actually uh, we used uh, uh, our uh, low pass filter actually uh, and high pass filter or band pass filter or band elimination uh, filter we generally uh, used so this is uh, what you can say let me see okay so in terms of uh, this uh, if you can uh, see the this is the characteristics of different filter low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter and band enablement filter so this is the attenuation characteristics for different type of filter where we take uh, this uh, frequency in the x axis irrespective of what what uh, what kind of filter it is so we take frequency in the x axis and uh, our attenuation uh, in the y axis okay so what is low pass filter it says that up to let's say f fc is our nothing but our cutoff frequency what is fc fc is our cutoff frequency so 0 to fc when the frequency range between 0 to fc this filter allow up to 0 to fc the signal but the signal which exists beyond fc it does not allow you got my point what is low pass filter this low pass filter is basically up to let's say fc is one cut off frequency so 0 to fc that means up to 0 to certain cut off frequency this filter allow the signal so that is called our pass band the pass band is that band where it allows the signal from 0 to certain cut off frequency that is called uh, that is called our low pass filter whereas beyond fc it doesn't allow the signal so this is our actually low pass filter high pass filter is just opposite of this low pass filter where it allows the signal from the cut off frequency fc to the higher frequency so that is actually your pass band whereas your zero to fc certain cut off frequency the signal is attenuated so this uh, kind of filter is called high pass filter so so please remember that in high pass filter certain cut off frequency and and beyond uh, the cut off frequency the signal is allowed whereas below the cut off frequency the signal is not allowed so that is actually a high pass filter what is band pass filter in band pass filter that there are two cut off frequencies are there one is f1 and f2 so between this cut off frequency f1 and f2 a signal is allowed so that is our pass band whereas below the cut off frequency f1 and above the cut off frequency f2 the signal is not allowed so that is actually your attenuation band so this is actually our band pass filter band elimination filter also sometimes we call a band stop filter also is just opposite of the band pass filter so in the band elimination filter if you can see so uh, you can say uh, less than the cut off frequency f1 
and beyond the cutoff frequency f of 2 the signal is allowed whereas between the between the cutoff frequency f1 and f2 the signal is not allowed so that is uh, actually our attenuation frequency so there are two terminals g generally we used in this filter one is pass band and alternate attenuation band when it is pass band means you confirm that within that band that means within that frequency range the signal is allowed whereas the attenuation band is that range of frequency where the signal is not allowed so that is actually the difference between pass band and attenuation band so this pass band and attenuation band have different frequency range for different kind of filters whether it is low pass filter high pass filter band pass filter and band elimination filter why it is called low pass because it is allowing the signal at low frequency range that means 0 to certain cut off frequency that is called f of c 0 to fc it allows the signal that means the low uh, lower frequency signal it allows that is called low pass filter low pass is something relates to the signal it allows in the lower frequency range you can say of the 0 to certain cut off frequency f of c why it is a high pass filter because it allows the signal be uh, certain cut off frequency certain cut because high frequency range it allows the signal that is our high pass filter band pass filter why it's called band pass why the term is band pass because certain frequency uh, between two cut off frequency range it allows the signal that is called band pass filter band elimination filter why it is same why it is same because below certain cut off frequency one cut off frequency and above certain cut off frequency it allows the signal that is called band elimination filter okay so anybody has doubt so far please let me know if anybody has any doubt so far regarding this uh, a different type of filter anybody has any doubt okay if no doubt at that just once uh, recapitulation of this filter so in low pass filter uh, it allows the signal zero to certain cut off frequency that is in the lower frequency range so zero to fc that is the lower frequency range it allows the signal whereas above the cutoff frequency it does not allow the signal that is a low pass filter for high pass filter it allows the signal for the high frequency range that is above the cutoff frequency that is our pass that is our pass band that is beyond our cutoff frequency f of c whereas your uh, zero to fc the signal is attenuated that means there is no signal is allowed between 0 to fc in band pass filter between the frequency range f1 to f2 the signal is allowed that is our pass band filter whereas 0 to f1 and beyond f2 the signal is not allowed that is our attenuation band in band stop filter below the cutoff frequency f1 and above the cutoff frequency f of 2 our signal is allowed whereas in between the cutoff frequency f1 and f2 the signal is attenuated so that is our band elimination filter or band stop filter okay so let's take the thing so by definition low pass filter is one which passes without attenuation all frequency up to cutoff frequency f of c and attenuates all other frequency greater than f of c now this is the attenuation characteristics is shown in this figure okay low pass filter this transmits current of all frequency from zero up to cut off frequency and the band is called pass band or transmission band okay this pass band is also sometimes called transmission band also and this attenuation band sometimes is also called stop band the frequency range over which the transmission does not take place is called stop band or attenuation band the step stop band for a low pass filter is the frequency range above the cutoff frequency okay so this is all about our low pass filter in high pass filter the filter attenuates all frequency below a designed cutoff frequency f of c and passes all frequency above f of c 
Thus, the pass band of this filter is frequency range above this f of c. Okay, the pass band is above is all about the frequency above the f of c, and the stop band is the frequency range below f of c. Now, this attenuation characteristics is how high pass filter is shown in this figure. Similarly, if this if you can think about band pass filter, a band pass filter passes the frequency between two designated cutoff frequency. And attenuates all other frequencies. Okay, now uh, this is called the band pass filter. So that means the, your band pass filter has two cutoff frequency, that is our f1 and f2. This two cutoff frequency f1 and f2, between which your signal is allowed. And beyond f, beyond above f of two, and below f of one, the signal is not allowed. Okay, so so we have this pass of band, pass band f1 minus f2. And f1 is the lower cutoff frequency, and f2 is the upper cutoff frequency. Now, for uh, band elimination filter, passes all frequency lying outside certain range, while it attenuates all frequency between two designated frequency. It is also referred as band stop filter. Also, now the characteristics of an ideal filter elimination is shown in this figure. So this is our the characteristics of the band elimination filter. And the, all the frequency between f1 and f2 will be attenuated, while frequency below f1 and, and above f2 will be passed. Okay. Now, let's consider about different kind of of filter networks. Okay, that we need to know. Okay, so that we need to consider different types of uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, we can say filter network. Okay. So. Ideally, actually, the filter uh, should have zero attenuation in the pass band. Should have zero attenuation in the pass band. Uh, this condition can be satisfied if all the elements of filter are dissipationless, which cannot be realized in practice. Okay. Now the filters are designed with an assumption that elements of the filters are purely reactive. Now there are different types of of uh, filters are uh, made. One is, if you can see, this is one kind of filter, this L-type filter. Okay, this is L-type filter. This is also one kind of L-type filter. Okay, this is one kind. What is this? Is one? This is uh, this is T-type filter. Okay, this is T-type filter. And what kind of this one? This one is the pi-type filter. Okay, because it looks like pi-type. Okay, so in T-type filter. If the characteristic, if the impedance is Z1 by 2, if the two arms are the same impedance value, but this arm, the resistor, the impedance value is less, Z of 2. Okay. Whereas in pi type network, these two arm resistance uh, impedance is same, that is 2 Z2, whereas this arm is Z1. Okay. So the filters can be made symmetrical, T or pi section, T and pi section. And, or it can be considered the on combination of on symmetrical L section. Okay. Acha. The ladder structure also that is another structure that is the ladder structure that is also one of the common forms of filter network. A cascade connection of several T and pi section constitute the ladder network. So a ladder network is nothing but when you come when we combine this T and pi network. So that is our actually uh, T type. Uh, this ladder structure. Now let's consider this. Actually, uh, you see, if we consider this one, uh, this uh, Z1, Z1, and Z2. So this is what T-type network. See, this is T-type network, T-type. Whereas Z1, Z2, and Z2. This is our pi-type network. Again, this Z1 and Z2, and uh, uh, this is our pi-type network, and this is again. Our pi type network. So this uh, this uh, T network is connected with two pi network uh, cascade in a cascaded way. Okay, so they are connected to each other. If this consider, if you can see, you see this is Z1 and two Z2 and Z2. This is our pi network. Okay, this is our pi network. Whereas Z1, Z1 and Z2. This is our T network. Similarly, your Z1, Z2, 2, Z2 is our is your pi network. Okay, so this is your this is your pi network. 
as you can see here, this is your uh, uh, Pi network. This is your T network. And this is also your Pi network. So Pi network is connected with T network and T network is connected with the Pi network. Similarly, in this case, if you can see, this is a T network. And this network, T network is connected with the Pi network. And this Pi network is connected with the another Pi network. Okay, so this is all about the different types of filter networks with generally common actors. So again, uh, I am uh, recapturating. So these uh, filter networks can be designed in a different way. One is actually this L type network like this. It looks like L. Okay, that is why it's called L type network. Another is T type network like this because it looks like T. And another is our Pi type network. Okay, this is Pi type network. The two L uh, two L type network can give rise to your T type network. Also, two L type network can give rise to Pi network. Also, if you can see, if you can combine these two L type network, if you can combine these two L type network, then that gives rise to your T type network. Whereas if we can combine these two L type networks, that gives rise to your Pi type network. So, depending upon what kind of networks which you are focusing on, so your net filter networks can be designed accordingly. Okay. But remember that if you design a T type uh, network, then these two arms uh, impedance value is same. So this uh, Z1 by Z2, Z1 by 2, Z1 uh, in these two arms <coughs> will be same. Whereas this arm impedance will be different, Z of 2. Similarly, for this pi network, these two arms, 2Z2, 2Z2, it will remain the same. But this arm uh, resistance will be, impedance will be different. Okay, so this is all about your, uh, your different types of your filter networks. Okay. So, this is all about then now. Uh, so, uh, we discussed about uh, this uh, two type of alternator that is what is called T type alternator. If you can remember, T type alternator we have discussed. Another is uh, we discussed about uh, this uh, pi type alternator. Then uh, we'll discuss about another type of network that is called a uh, lattice alternator okay what is called a lattice alternator a lattice alternator is something a symmetrical resistance lattice which is actually shown in this figure okay now the series and series and the diagonal are on the network can be specified in terms of its characteristic resistance z naught and the propagation constant gamma so that can be expressed in terms of that value actually now it has been we can say that that the characteristic impedance of the symmetrical network is the geometrical mean of the open and short circuit impedance so this network can be redrawn like this if you can see this lattice alternator it can be redrawn like this so in this in this uh, if you can see in this uh, point it will be the characteristic resistance. So that we can redraw like this. So this is R1, this is R2. So this is R1 and R2. This is our characteristic resistance R0. This is the current I1 is flowing. Let's say in this branch I is flowing, then it will be I1 minus I. Then if you further subdivide the current, it will be I plus I2 and I1. And in this branch, it is I1 minus I minus I2. So if you can find out the short circuit uh, the impedance, it will be 2R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Similarly, your open circuited uh, impedance will be R1 plus R2 divided by uh, divided by 2. So, what will be your characteristic impedance for this network? The characteristic impedance, or you can say your characteristic resistance in term, in other words. So, Z open circuit, Z short circuit multiplication. And then after that, we'll take the square root. So it is the square root of 
open circuit impedance and short circuit uh, impedance. Okay. So what will be then? Your R naught, your characteristic impedance R naught will be R one R two square root. Now, if you can apply input impedance at one one one, okay. If you can apply uh, at one one one, this one and one. If you can apply this uh, input impedance is R zero when network is terminated in R two is two two. When applying Kirchhoff voltage law, we can get your B one is equal to I one R naught, where R naught is your characteristic resistance, where uh, and that we can write it as. I1 minus I into R1 plus R2 R0 plus 1 plus I2 R1. So if you can rearranging these terms, then it will be coming as I1 by I2 is equal to 1 plus R1 by R0 divided by 1 minus R1 by R0. Okay. So then what will be then after this? That's this term. As you said, as you know, this uh, the ratio of input current to the Output current that we can express in terms of n, the ratio that is called n. So this n is nothing but e to the power alpha. That is equal to I1 by I2, which is nothing but 1 plus R1 divided by R0 divided by 1 minus R1 divided by R0. So that gives rise to your e to the power alpha is equal to 1 plus square root of R1 divided by R2 divided by 1 minus square root of R1 minus R2. So this is your propagation constant alpha. So that is log one plus square root of R1 divided by R2 divided by one minus square root of R1 divided by R2. Okay. So so if we can substitute in this equation, then we can get n is n multiplied by one minus R1 by R0, which is equal to one plus R1 divided by R0. So that we can write in terms of R1 and R2 in terms of its characteristic resistance and n. So what is R1 then? Your R1 is R0 n minus 1 divided by n plus 1. So this is your R1. <coughs> Similarly, how to find it R2? Your R2 will be R0 uh, n plus 1 divided by n minus 1. Okay. So this is your Uh, this is your uh, R2 resistance. So if you know R1 and R2, then we can design the lattice alternator. Just like if you know the resistance R1 and R2, we can design the T-type network and Pi-type network. Similarly, we can design the lattice alternator. So let's take one example. Let's say design is symmetrical lattice alternator to have characteristic impedance of 800 ohm and attenuation of 20 decibel. So how we can solve this equation? So what is given here? We have given your uh, characteristic resistance R not is equal to 800 ohm. Okay. And what is your D? Your D is equal to 20 decibel. Okay. Then, then how we can find out N? As you know, we can find N as anti log D by 20. So D is nothing but your attenuation, which is expression decibel. So if you can Find its uh, anti-log. Then it's 20 by 20 is equal to 10. Okay. So once we get the value of n, then your uh, problem is solved. Because n is given, n we find out, and uh, R not value already is given. R not that is 800 ohm. So just we have to put the values, and we can get the value of R1 and R2. Okay. Because R1 and R2 are expressed in terms of Characteristic resistance R not and your n. Okay, so if you can find out, so this is your series resistance R one. Okay, the so series resistance R uh, uh, R one that is equal to R not n minus one divided by n plus one. So if you can substitute this value because your n is 10 and your characteristic resistance 800 ohm. So if you can uh, substitute this value. Then we can get 654.645.545 ohm. 654.545 ohm. So this is your series resistance. So this, so this is your series resistance. If you can see here in these cases, so this is your series resistance. And what is your diagonal R resistance then? 
your diagonal r by resistance will be r2 is equal to r0 which is equal to n plus 1 divided by n minus 1 okay so that is 800 into 10 plus 1 divided by 10 minus 1 that is 977.777 ohm so this is your lattice actuator okay so this is your lattice actuator so in this way your lattice actuator can be designed okay so so we have studied uh, t type attenuator pi type attenuator and this is all about lattice actuator so if if anything let's say uh, asked they design a lattice attenuator you can uh, design like this okay so find out the value of r you have to find out the value of r1 and r2 where r1 is your series r resistance and your uh, r2 is your diagonal r resistance and after finding out the r1 and r2 then you can find out the the uh, the series r resistance and diagonal r resistance value and you can draw the circuit and put the value accordingly so this in the series arm resistance you put this value and in the diagonal arm resistance you put this value so that gives rise to your resulting lattice actuator <coughs> okay similarly if you can find out the breast t type actuator it is also uh, if you can find then this breast type t type actuator or it looks like this so we have a uh, characteristic uh, resistance R0 and we have a resistance RA and uh, we have RB and um, then we have to find out the relation and there also the same thing that we have to find out what actually your uh, R2 and RB here and then we can design the symmetrical base type attenuator. So if we, let's say we have to design a symmetrical base T type attenuator with attenuation band let's say 20 decibel and terminated load resistance of 500 ohm then you could do like this same thing that uh, from the uh, attenuation you have to find out the value of n then you have to find out what is ra what is ra that is nothing but r naught into n minus 1 that gives rise to 4500 ohm and what is your rb rb is your r naught divided by n minus 1 that is your 55.55 ohm so that gives this rise to a desired uh, T type attenuator. Okay. So this is all about uh, different types of filters and uh, different types of attenuators.